Hello everyone, welcome back to Mount and Blade Warband Clash of Kings. As Timid, son of Timid, the red hand of the burned man and the leader of the mountain clans of the Vale. And one day we will return to our home and reclaim what is rightfully ours. But in the meantime, we will enjoy the spoils of war that we gain from fighting for House Lannister in the War of the Five Kings. Now, I should also mention that we've obviously left off last episode in a big battle against Lord Rickard Karstark and Sir Edmure Tully, and we've we've been victorious. Now I didn't uh, I, I think we've we've seen that that we were victorious in the battle, but I didn't actually show you uh, the outcome, and it's a pretty impressive outcome because we had the chance to make a very important captive. We'll talk about this very soon, but I just want to quickly go over what we're going to do this episode. We are actually going to join Kevin Lannister in his assault of Fair Market because uh, right now, let's actually uh, leave our camp for now because right now we are outside the village of Shara that we've just looted. And basically, we can loot everything within the Riverlands without any opposition because we have Sir Edmure Tully as captives. The Lord of the Riverlands is our captive, so no one is going to stand in our way because we're just going to kill their liege lord, which is very nice. It's a very, very good, uh, I guess, hostage to have, and uh, we're going to enjoy our spoils. So let's have a quick look at what we've gained from Shara. So, um, yeah, obviously we had all of this food. I rearranged the food first, but then we had some exquisite jar of arbor wine. We had some honey, salt, all this other stuff, a lot of lumber, uh, some coal, really, really good stuff, which I'm very happy about. But we need to get back to Fairmark because the battle has already started. And we see some, uh, some well, river lords rushing to defend their city, and we don't want that. We need to be there before Lord Jason Manister can reinforce the garrison of Fairmax. So we're going to head there first. Also, we're also going to have to have a look at our uh, party. We did actually take quite some casualties in the battle. Uh, most of them, well, we didn't actually lose anyone. In, in fact, we gained a Lannister Spearman who is now directly fighting for us, which is very nice. But um, we, well... A lot of our chieftains are actually quite wounded. The only one who's still standing right now is uh, Ulf, son of Umar. And we, of course, have our petty chieftain. And I think, uh, depending on how he will do in the assault of Fair Market, he might actually earn himself a place amongst the other chieftains. We'll see. But I think that this will be his final trial. The depending on how well he does in Fair Market, um, well, that that's gonna that's gonna decide whether or not he is worthy of becoming a major chieftain. But yeah, so let's head over to Fairmark and see what the situation is like. We obviously have a little bit of cattle that we're gonna bring there, even though it's no longer requested. Uh, Lee Lefford is apparently standing outside the gates of Fairmarket. Uh, I'm guessing he is commanding the rear. He is a bit wounded, but that's fine. So he is actually. Um, well, he's actually here just to make sure no one is uh, going to attack the. Oh, wait, did the attack stop? Apparently... Okay, that is confusing. Apparently it's no, it's it's just under siege. Where? I, I was... Did they lose? It's... I, okay, this is very confusing. I don't know what just happened. But apparently, Kevin Lannister has abandoned the siege of Fair Market. Now, I'm thinking this could be because the River Lords have just taken the Stony Sap from the, uh, from the rest of the lands. But that, ah, okay, that I was not expecting. Hmm, well, I, I guess we're going to uh, have to find out what's going on. Maybe we can follow Lord Leo Lefford and ask what is going on right now. Um, because I just saw, hmm, yeah, Fairmark is no longer under siege. And now Leo Lefford is going back to the Golden Tooth. Hmm, this is very strange. I, I can't explain why this is. Well, you know what, guys, I think we're going to have to find out what's going on. I'll come back as soon as I know what has just happened. So I'll see you guys in a second. Now guys, I have spoken to Lord Leo Lefet at the Golden Tooth and he's told me that Kevin Lannister is apparently in Castle Rock, which seems very strange because I was pretty sure I just saw him, uh, well, start the siege or even the assault of the walls of Fairmarket. So this is very strange. Apparently, uh, I was completely wrong, but 
well, we don't know. Apparently he is here, so on our way to uh, Castle Rock, we've actually encountered Sir Stephen Frey and his party of 42 men in these woods right here. Now, he's actually being uh, pursued by Stafford Lannister, but he is way too slow to catch up to him, but we have basically been hiding in these woods. And look at this, if we were to actually take out Sir Stephen Frey right now, we would have the possibility of getting a couple of heavy Westland knights, regular knights and elite longbowmen, really good troops from, uh, I guess, the, the well, dun well, he doesn't have dungeons, but I guess we can free the captives and join them to our own ranks, which would really help us out since we lack cavalry and we kind of need it in the plains. So I'm thinking about actually uh, attacking. I'm hoping that Stafford Lannister will join us because otherwise I don't see a chance that we actually win this, but we'll see. Uh, so let's actually uh, try and catch him. There's actually a huge Lannister army over there as well. Um, but yeah, let's talk to him. I am Timid, son of Timid, sir. Stafford Lannister has joined the battle last night, so I'm pretty sure that we are going to win this. So yeah, I say only this, I say this only once, Stefan Frey. Surrender or die. Okay, so... We have 147 against his 43 men, so we should pretty much uh, win this quite easily, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, obviously our own troops are not that powerful just yet, um, but we'll see. Uh, now that obviously the um, the Salt of Fair Market has been called off, I think that this battle might be um, a chance for a Petty Chieftain to redeem himself or earn his spurs. But yeah, let's have a quick look at who we've actually deployed. Apparently, all of our troops, yeah, all of our 37 troops are deployed, so that's very good. We only have Ulf uh, with us, and we have a couple of archers. Now, I'm uh, wondering, where's our, where are our enemies? Okay, they're right there on this hilltop. At least I see some banners and some horsemen there as well. So, I'm thinking about just setting up my archers right here, and we're going to send up our infantry in front. And we'll put them into a shield wall, of course. And I hope that they can hold them off. Uh, but obviously, you need to stay there, guys. Move forward, my infantry. Um, now, obviously, my archers are kind of... <laughs> okay, we're all just clumping together. That's one way to do it. Um, okay, this is... But this is not working out, I think. Oh, look at this lord. He's, he looks just like Rickard Caster, but he has... The Twin Towers of Frey. Okay, and actually it was just... One of our Hill Tribe warriors has taken out Sir Stefan Frey. And one of... Well, we have actually taken out a Riverland Knight. Alright, so we seem to have this under control. Mostly because Sir Stefan Frey has just charged in headlessly. So I think we're just going to charge in our infantry now. Um, since, yeah, most of their heavy cavalry has already been destroyed. Very nice. Alright, our archers, I think we're just going to move up a little bit maybe on this hill down there that will work out and Ulf you are going to join me and we're gonna head straight in okay is this all of our infantry I think so yeah uh, where's our chieftain he should be in the front of those could also okay there he is I think that's him that's him right there the petty chieftain come on you got you gotta be a little bit faster oh wow we're losing a lot of Westland Knights now, obviously, I'm not losing them personally, but this is not looking too good. I think, you know what, we're going to have to put our infantry together a little bit right here. We need to group and, uh, yeah, group them a little bit. Stafford Lannister is still alive. Group our infantry. Um, and I think charge them forward. All right, now you can charge. Take them on together. We lost a hill tribe warrior. Oh, gosh. Alright, some of our warriors are over there fighting. We have to have a look at our petty chieftain. He just killed someone, so that's good. Nice, nice. Oh, wow, we're losing men. We are losing men quickly. Oh, the petty chieftain has been killed! No! Wow, these these guys are nuts. These heavy... Uh, these wrestling on the two-handers are pretty nuts. Come on. Wolf, you can do it. Take him out. Take him out. Alright, I'm gonna do it. Actually, no, he, he did kill someone. Two people, actually. Nice. Alright, where's the uh, rest of them? I think that's it. We're fighting the last man. One of them is running. But Achitan actually went down. So I think 
it's time for new chieftain to emerge. He was not ready. He was apparently not ready to become a major chieftain. But you know that is that was why we why we trialed them, right? We put them on trial because not everyone is fit to become a ruler. Uh, okay, so I think we're just gonna finish off this battle. This should get yeah, this should be over soon enough. And have a look at our our casualty reports. Come on, let me get out of this battle. Nice. So we've actually lost our petty chieftain, which is too bad. It's gonna take a while for some uh, or for a new one, I guess, to emerge. But uh, we will have a pretender soon enough, I think. Uh, we also lost a elite hill tribe warrior. We lost two regular warriors. Okay, and a Westland Levy. Hmm, so mostly warriors that we lost. Uh, Uma had two kills, very nice, and we had three kills ourselves. Nice, but we completely annihilated Stefan Frey, and now I'm hoping, yes, we not only made a new prisoner, but also I'm hoping that we can get some more people. Yes, we get a heavy Westland Knight, so some new cavalry for us. Very good, another Westland. We're gonna take them all if we can. Uh, some two-handers, of course, very, very good troops. I don't think I'm going to be picking up this peasant, but, um, well, we might. Um, actually, this two-hander, can he... Okay, he's going to level up as well. Nice. Some pretty decent troops. I'm... I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually liking this. I'm not going to pick up the peasant because we don't have need to have any peasants in our ranks. Um, and these warriors, you're going to be a veteran. And we still have this one berserker, and we have... If I'm not mistaken, yeah, this Berserker might be the next Petty Chieftain, but we don't know. So far, he has not earned enough, uh, I guess, experience. And one of our Brutes, the last one of our Brutes is going to upgrade to a Savage. But now, every one of our other Chieftains has went down. Now, Timid is actually still doing quite fine. He has not suffered his first wound, which is nice. And we have Barbara Dustin. Uh, in prison, Sir Edmitoli, of course, and now Sir Stefan Frey as well. So hopefully we're going to get a nice ransom for all of these guys because I'm not particularly interested in just keeping them around. Maybe Barbara Dustin we're going to keep around, um, just, you know, for the morale of the troops. And perhaps we also want to join in against Sir Walder Frey and Sir Mark Piper over here. Now I'm pretty surprised that these river lords have made it all the way into the west. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to join in. And help them out on this. Another battle. Oh, this is Sir Kevin Lannister. Sir Helmut Page. Sir Stephen Swift. And Sir Garth Greenfield. Which one do we want to join? Louis Lydon is right here. So I think it's much better to join over in this battle. Basically, we can only join one of them. Um, hopefully not gonna... Ah, we're too late. Too late indeed. There's some raiders. Hmm. Alright, so we've been too late for both battles. That was to be expected. Now, let's see, where is Kevin? I, s I saw his face. Ah, uh, there he is. Right, he's, he's riding right past us. Alright, I'm gonna try and catch him and talk to him and see what the current plan is. I'm very surprised that uh, the assault of Fairmarket was called off like that. It's very strange. Apparently, he's riding to the crag. Uh, we're gonna follow him and see what the plan is. There's actually a lot of people here. So this seems to be some kind of an event going on. A feast. Let's join that feast. I was for feasting. We have won some very important battles. Well, guys, we're actually going to um, make ourselves familiar with some of these lords. Because so far, they are looking down upon us. Look at all their nice robes and clothes. And look what we are wearing. Furs and leather. But, you know, we're a warrior through and through, so they're just going to have to deal with it. But, as I said, we're not going to stick uh, with these uh, with House Lannister until the end of days. We are going to set out uh, on our own to take the take back the veil. Um, but for now, we're just going to have to play it nice and placate them all, just so that we can, well, benefit from this war. But anyways, guys... I'm going to have to uh, stop right here for a second and I'll come back as soon as uh, we've made ourselves familiar and as soon as maybe we've rested up a little bit because obviously a lot of our chieftains are quite hurt so I'll see you guys. So guys, I've been talking to the lords, the western lords that are currently present at the crag and Kevin Lannister in particular has actually tasked us with pillaging and looting the Riverlands. So basically we're supposed to take uh, all the food, all the valuables that we can carry and destroy or burn the rest um, just to teach these guys a lesson and you know pillaging is nothing uh, that you need to to tell the hell tribes twice 
we know how to do this and we're going to do it. But one thing I just quickly want to show you while we're at the feast, we've also been talking to the ladies and look at this. Look at these ladies. Look how they follow Timid around. They adore him, especially uh, Jane Westerling. She is a quite an attractive lady and uh, we've already wooed her quite a bit, but she wouldn't make for a good queen. But the only one that does not, that kind of stands out and that does not follow around timid like that is this lady right here, Walled Up Rax. She, she apparently doesn't even pay us any mind. Um, and I don't want to talk to you, Jane. Oh, God damn it. This little girl. Uh, let's talk to Walled Up Rax. Now, she actually does not like us at all. But that somehow, somehow makes it very intriguing. She looks like a warrior queen. She looks like a queen fit to rule uh, the mountain clans. And I'm, I'm of a mind to steal her away. I think we will do this. Now, obviously, we need to work a little bit more on convincing her because at the moment, uh, this probably wouldn't end up in a good, well, relationship. But uh, as soon as we've improved some relations, we're probably just going to steal her away. But obviously, we're going to have to do this just before we end our relations with the West because otherwise, we might run into trouble with her father, Lord uh, Titus Brax. I think he was... Uh, over here as well, but maybe hmm I don't know where he is right now. I think oh there he is Luke Titus Rex. Yeah We might run into trouble with him and that's obviously something that we don't want at the moment But yeah, so uh, we're going to obviously leave right now We're gonna leave the crack and we're gonna make our way over to the Romulans and we're basically just gonna set them on fire Loot every village we can now this one's already being raided, but milestone mill high heart Penny Tree, there's so many villages not looted, uh, it's, it's going to be glorious. But before we do this, I think we're going to have to uh, stop by uh, on some cities. For example, Lannisport, to sell off all of the uh, loot that we've already gotten. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to do that off camera. All the while, we're obviously going to have to train up our troops, and of course, we're going to have to see if this Berserker is uh, going to attempt to become a chieftain. We'll see. But anyways... Uh, I will uh, do that off camera. I'll see you guys in a second. Welcome guys to Lannisport at night. So we made our way all the way over here. So we're currently at the marketplace and we sold off most of our loot. Now we have a little bit of food left. Obviously we still have the armor of old Aemon Targaryen that has been given to us by Tyrion Lannister. And we obviously set aside this masterwork sword that we're not yet able to wield. But other than that, we sold off most of the things that we've looted so far. And in total, we now have 10,000 gold coins. And I've been thinking about maybe it would be a smart idea to reinvest this money right here in Lannisport. Because Lannisport seems to be a rather safe city and all the lords and ladies here are very interested in velvet. Velvet really gives a good price here. There's other things that give a good price as well, but this in particularly is gonna really do a good, well, give a good revenue. Now this is something obviously very new to the Hill Tribe, something that we're not used to, but we need to sustain our army. And as I said, we're not going to stay with the Lannisters forever. We will venture out on our own eventually and we need something that pays for it. So right now, obviously the sell sword contract we have with Lord Tywin Lannister is giving us enough money monthly so that we're actually able to, uh, well, grow richer from the loot. But if we wouldn't have that, we would eventually have to use sell of all the loot just so we could provide enough food, armor, and weapons for our troops. But if we were to set up one of such uh, productive enterprises right here, um, we would actually be making quite a lot of money, perhaps enough to, um, well, pay for all of our troops. But yeah, let's talk to the guildmaster right here. And um, of course, I wish to buy land in this town for a productive enterprise. And as I said, I've been looking at uh, what would be the most profitable. And it seems as though uh, weavery and dye works to make Welwood from silk and dye would be the best. We would gain 516 coins, which is apparently, or not apparently, but which is approximately as much as we're making from our sellsword contract at the moment. So I think that this is what we're going to do. Now, obviously, this is going to get rid of all of our wealth at the moment. This is something very risky, something we're not used to, but we are Timid, son of Timid. We are the one to unite the veil 
and we need to take some risks if we want to make this work. So let's do that. We're gonna uh, all of our 10,000 gold coins. It does hurt. I have to admit that this actually does hurt. And yeah, look look at the shame. I ca I wouldn't even look at, at at your face right now. This is. Who? This is all of our tribe's money that we've just spent. If this if this fails, then we'll probably we'll probably just you know set ourselves back several years. Um, possibly, possibly we've we won't be able to to ever get the veil now. But it's a big risk we have to take. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna have to uh, end this episode here. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Next time I'll come back, but I probably by that time I will be somewhere in the Riverlands uh, off looting, raiding, and pillaging. So I want you guys uh, to obviously tell me if you enjoyed the video, and uh, if so, please uh, click the like button as well. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.